Welcome friends, Petrini here with Homegrown Florida. Have you ever had a fruit tree die once you planted it in the yard? Or maybe you don't have a yard at all and wanna know how to plant a tree in a container. If you've planted fruit trees in the past or if you want to add some fruit trees to your garden, you are in the right place. I'm gonna show you exactly how I planted all these trees, including one in a pot by my pool. So let's jump right into it. The very first step in planting fruit trees is choose the right tree. I know it sounds pretty obvious, but there are several things you need to consider. Certain trees will do better than others, and if you are new to fruit trees, you really wanna set yourself up for success. So you wanna pick a fruit tree that grows like a weed in your area. Also, you need to consider climate in your area. I'm talking about chill hours, rainfall, and planting zones. For example, here in Florida, we don't get very cold. <laughs> I have a peach tree in my yard and it is specially designed variety that the University of Florida created so it can handle the low amount of chill hours and the high heat and humidity that we receive the rest of the year. I also really like getting my fruit trees from somewhere local. I got all these trees from Pete with Green Dreams who is right down the road from me here in Spring Hill. Uh, my husband and I actually know Pete and he invited us over to let us try out these different fruits. This was an amazing experience because you rarely get the opportunity to try the fruit before you buy it and plant it and then care for this fruit tree for years. It's always been my fear to grow up a fruit tree for years and years and years and then figure out that I don't like the taste of the fruit. <laughs> I have to say that now that I have a few years of growing fruit at home under my belt, um, I have not ever had a homegrown fruit that I didn't like. Um, I think the reason for that is because fruit is sweet. <laughs> and when you grow it at home, you can pick it at the various stages of ripeness. So for example, mulberries have a super tart taste when they are red. But if you just wait and let them ripen into a black color, they are so incredibly sweet. So don't be like me. <laughs> don't let that hold you up. If you can try the fruit ahead of time, awesome. But if you don't, don't stress it. Now let me show you how I get these trees planted in the yard. Make sure to hang out to the end because I'm also gonna show you how and why I'm growing some trees in pots. The first step I do when I'm going to plant a fruit tree is I remove all the grass to give the tree a perimeter. This part is really important for my area because the type of grass in my yard is, I think it's Bermuda, and that stuff spreads. <laughs> if you don't pull it out and put a perimeter up, it will spread back over the tree. We have some spots along our fence that had some erosion, so we actually treated this grass like sod and put a new border along the entire fence line with this grass. Now I dug a hole. You wanna make sure your hole is deeper than the tree's pot. And that's because we're going to be adding some nutrients to this hole to help feed the tree as it gets adjusted. I want to show you what kind of soil I'm working with here in Florida. You can see the first couple inches is pretty good dirt and that's because um, you know I've been working really hard on this soil around the entire yard. We don't use any chemicals on our yard but what we will do is sprinkle compost over our grass in the spring and fall to help feed it. We get a lot of big birds around our property that like to pick through our yard for bugs. So they're helping with aeration and of course they're pooping. <laughs> the next layer is the fill dirt from uh, when this house was built. Not a lot of nutrients, but every year that layer seems to be getting smaller and smaller from what I can tell. The deepest layer is what looks like sugar sand, which is pretty common here in Florida. It's great at draining water, but not super great at holding nutrients. Because of that, we're gonna add some bagged compost. And the reason I'm using bagged compost is because mine isn't ready. And I really wanna save that for my beds. Those plants tend to need more nutrients than the trees just because I'm growing so much in them and they never get a rest because I'm in Florida where we can grow all year round. So I've added about half a bag of the black cow to the hole. Then I like to add an organic granular fertilizer to the hole with the compost. This is um, Job's fruit and citrus fertilizer. I use it on pretty much all my fruit trees, not just, you know, citrus. I'm adding a half cup to the hole and I'm going to save the other half for the top. The next thing I do, which I think really, really helps my trees adjust to their new spot is watering the hole. I fill the hole up with a bunch of water and let it sink down. This usually only takes about 15 to 20 minutes. Then I do that again. <laughs> you really want to make sure that there's plenty of water down there for the tree. 
Now put the tree in the hole and um, make sure that the tree base is slightly above ground level because this tree is going to sink a little bit as it settles. You never want to plant the tree below ground level. This could cause the tree to rot or it could cause the tree to have what's called wet feet and it will not shed the water properly. So make sure the tree is about one to three inches higher than the ground level. Once you have the tree in the hole, I'll add other half of the compost and the fertilizer to the top and around the sides. <laughs> I'm then going to be stepping on the tree. <laughs> I know it looks rough, but I'm making sure that it's making good contact with the soil below. Now I'm adding back some of the native soil back to the perimeter. All that extra native soil that didn't make the cut, I poured into my compost bin so it will get some good nutrition worked back into it. Helpful hint, you can do this with any of your used soil from pots or containers to help breathe life back into that soil. Yep, that's right, we are going to be watering again. <laughs> we are in a drought period, so I wanted to make sure these trees get watered super well. I'll probably water these about every four days for a couple of weeks, and then I'm gonna switch to weekly. Once our summer rains start, I won't really water again. It's pretty cool that they handle their watering all on their own pretty quickly, especially once the roots get established. The only time I water them after summer is usually the following spring when I'm applying their fertilizer. So we're gonna repeat that process with the loquat and the two mulberries on the end. If this video is giving you some good tips for planting your own fruit trees, hit that thumbs up button for me. I wanted to take a minute to talk about the distance between these trees. The first one we have is the plum tree, and I gave that one 12 feet from the peach tree and another 12 feet from the loquat. This is the absolute minimum you want to space them. 15 to 20 feet would be even better. There's a pretty big gap in between the loquat and the mulberries because we do plan on one more tree here. The plum tree needs a friend in order for it to pollinate, so I'm still deciding on if I'm just going to graft another plum tree to the one I just planted, or if we're gonna put the second tree in that open spot. The reason we didn't get the second one while we were at Green Dreams was because they only had the one variety at the moment. And this plum variety is part of the golf series that UF came up with, but they have been a bit hard to source. So if you know of any nurseries that carry the golf plum trees, please, please, please head down in the comments and let me know. The last two trees are the mulberry trees and they are 15 feet away from the empty spot and nothing is on the other side of the fence. We planted the two of them right next to each other, only two feet apart, and this was recommended from our nursery at Green Dreams. Apparently, this is a style of growing some fruit trees that does work for them, and we saw this method at his property, so I definitely know it works. Um, so we got a Thai dwarf and a world's best mulberry tree. Our plan with all of these trees is to keep them about 15 feet tall. It means a lot more maintenance that I have to do every year to keep them short, but this is really my only option since we don't have a big, huge property, and it's a goal for me in 2023 to start producing a lot of my own fruit for our household. We currently grow a lot of our own veggies and herbs, but not very much fruit, so I knew I wanted to go big this year. Speaking of the year, that reminds me that I wanted to tell you why I bit off such a project right now because you guys know that I'm not very much into projects outside of January and February. Well, that's because the best time to plant a fruit tree is in early spring. You want to make sure there is not any possibility of frost once you plant the tree, but you also want to get them in right after that time frame occurs because that will give this tree plenty of time to adjust and develop its root structure. Also, in my area, it's best to get trees in before we start getting rain every day because that can cause fungal issues and the pests get pretty crazy during the summer here. So getting these trees planted now means they have a few months before they start encountering those issues. That gives them time to get adjusted and healthy before they enter that toughest time. It also gives them many, many months before we enter back into winter. Be prepared that when you first put a fruit tree in, you will see that the tree kind of stalls for a couple months. Nothing will be happening. No new leaves, nothing. <laughs> but that's very normal. It's growing a root system, and that's an important step for the tree. Don't mess with it during this time. Some trees will start showing growth faster than others. 
My lychee tree <laughs> took nine months to put on even one new leaf. Then right after they did, we were in winter and it basically stopped growing again. <laughs> That tree has really tested my patience, but it is finally filling out and growing again. After we finished planting all the trees, we put down some pavers. Now this is completely optional, but if I don't put a perimeter around the tree, the crazy grass I have will completely cover the ground around the tree. And I like to keep that area clear so I can water and fertilize the tree most efficiently. The pavers also help my husband when he's weed eating, he won't accidentally hit the trunk of the tree this way. The last step we have to do is add mulch. Super, super important. This is probably why they conserve water so well because this mulch traps the water down there. It also reduces the weeds from forming and kind of stealing the water and nutrition from the tree. If you notice, I do have a few marigolds around uh, my peach tree, but I don't usually do that until I know the tree can stand on its own. So usually somewhere in year two or three, and I only do a few plants, and specifically plants that are not heavy feeders. <laughs> so flowers, herbs, beans, peas, cow peas are all really good options when you get to that point. The mulch I like to use under my trees is pine bark nuggets. I like the bigger size because it doesn't break down as fast. I also like these because there are no dyes or colors added to them. You could totally do things like straw, wood chips, or leaf litter, but just know it's gonna break down faster. I don't really recommend using grass clippings just because you might end up with some weed seeds and then you will be weeding these all the time. And my goal is to not have to manage these trees more than what I already do. Another thing to ensure is that there is a gap between your mulch and the trunk of the tree. So after I put the mulch down, I will use my hands to just kind of pull it away from the trunk by about two to four inches. Now that we got all those guys in, let's move on to planting a tree in a pot. There are a lot of good reasons to plant a tree in a pot rather than in the ground. The reason I'm doing it is because this particular tree is a Jabba Tacaba, which is like a tropical tree grape. <laughs> it's really unique and I love the flavor, but they are super tropical trees, so they don't like temperatures below 40 degrees. The same goes for that banana tree that I have planted in a pot. My area will get temperatures down into the 20s during the winter, so I'm pushing the zones with these two trees. By putting them in a pot, I can move them inside during the one or two days a year where it gets way too cold for them. Another reason could be that you just don't have in-ground growing space because maybe you're renting or maybe you just don't have a large enough yard for a tree. There's a lot of good reasons for growing a tree in a container, but this is only going to work with certain trees. The banana is a dwarf variety, so I think it's gonna do okay in a pot as long as I reduce the number of pups. It will not produce as much as it would if it were in the ground, but bananas produce so much fruit that I'm okay with this trade-off. The Jabba Takaba here is a little different than the banana. It's gonna produce pretty well in a pot. Also, this type of fruit tree grows super, super slow. So it can live in this pot for a very long time and continue to produce with absolutely no issues. Another thing that is unique with this tree is that it prefers more acidic soil than my yard has. So by keeping it in a pot, I can manage the pH level of the plant better. So first, we're gonna drill several holes in the bottom of this pot so it gets good drainage because this guy doesn't like to be overwatered. This next step is going to be a little bit weird because normally how I would pot something like I did with the banana was I would mix potting soil with maybe some peat moss and some fertilizer. But the Jabba Chacaba does not really like soil. <laughs> um, it likes peat moss because of that acidity level that it wants. So we're just going to mix a little bit of compost with the peat moss and then put the plant in that way. I want to make sure I say this. Peat moss is not necessary for most trees, but since this one likes it a little acidic, the peat moss will add that acid to the soil naturally. That's why I'm adding it. I would not recommend this if you were growing something like a peach or a plum tree. So besides the soil difference, we're gonna use all the same principles as the in-ground trees. We'll place the tree base a little taller than the top of the soil. Um, then we're gonna fill the pot up the rest of the way with that peat moss. Remember to press it down so it's getting good contact with the soil below. Then we're just gonna water it in really well. I wanna make sure when I'm watering in a potted tree that some of the water comes from the drainage holes on the bottom. That way you know you've made enough water into the pot. 
Just like with the in-ground trees, we're gonna add some mulch to the top of the pot so that it holds the water longer. And I think that's especially important for the Java de Cava because it does have so much peat moss. Because we're growing in a pot, we will need to water these more often. Pots dry out faster, so make sure that you put this down as a reminder in your phone or calendar to remember to do this. Otherwise, your tree could struggle pretty quickly and that will impact its ability to fight diseases and pests as well as produce fruit. From my experience, anytime you're going to grow in a container, be aware that by simply restricting the roots to that space will reduce yield. For some trees like bananas, maybe that's not a huge deal because we are not going to be able to eat 50 pounds of bananas, so having less is fine. But with something like a peach tree, I'm probably going to be getting between 70 and 90 peaches from my in-ground peach tree this year. But if you had it in a pot, you may only get 10 to 15 peaches. Based on how much more work a potted tree is going to take, you have to decide if that productivity is worth the amount of work you're gonna to have to be putting into it. I'll keep you all updated on how each one of these did so that you can see which ones worked and maybe which ones didn't. <laughs> If you want to watch a couple more of my videos, I'll pop them up right here. You can check those out between now and my next upload. Happy gardening, guys.